the Teaching Tax Flow podcast, where the goal is to empower and educate you to legally and ethically minimize taxes paid over your lifetime. Welcome back to the Teaching Tax Flow podcast, everybody. Episode 78 today. We are here for the entrepreneurs. If you may or may not know that, now you do. This show is a perfect example of that because we are going to dive headfirst into retirement accounts for entrepreneurs. But even more exciting than that today, we have a new sponsor, and I know Chris loves this one. So before we jump into it, let's take a brief moment and thank our sponsor. Hi, Chris Picuro here, founder of Teaching Tax Flow, co-host of the Teaching Tax Flow podcast, and pickleball enthusiast. Yes, if you listen to the podcast, you know almost every episode we talk about pickleball, the most popular and growing sport in America. We have tons of opportunities for paddles and and pickleballs, but we don't have a lot of great gear on the market. Well, I am so excited to announce that Sunsets and Dinks are now a sponsor of the Teaching Tax Flow podcast and produce amazing gear, not only to look at, but you feel confident on the court. Because you are part of the Teaching Tax Flow community, you get a 15% discount on all your orders with them. I know I love the gear I received and I have quite a good record while wearing it, believe it or not, even at my level. Go to teachingtaxflow.com backslash pickleball and simply enter TTF15 in the serve up promo code area of your paddle rack. Here we are back again. Kind of sounds like the beginning of a rap song, but it is true. We are here to talk about those retirement accounts for entrepreneurs. How exciting or more exciting could that possibly be considering that one of the things when you go into business for yourself, eh, maybe on the bottom of the list, you're looking that far into the future. So let's make everybody feel a little bit better here today. And of course, the bald guy with all the knowledge, Chris Pakira. We brought him back to his own show. How's it going, Chris? It's going great. I'm excited to be back. And uh, excited to talk about this topic because we talk a lot in the teaching tax flow community about retirement and income planning. But one of the things with entrepreneurs, um, and we're going to talk about common retirement plans for entrepreneurs on this episode, is that for entrepreneurs, we don't have a set it and forget it option. You know, a lot of people that are an employee for a long period of time, that first week they start the job, they, they, you know, fill out all their forms. They say, oh, I'm going to put a percentage of money into the 401k plan. And then they kind of forget about it. And, you know, hopefully for them, they'd never touch that money. And 30 years later, they look and they've got a nice size, uh, a nice, nice large amount in that 401k plan or whenever they leave that employer, they could roll it into another plan. But for entrepreneurs, and I've been one for over 20 years now, it's on us to take the bull by the horns in our retirement and talk about in the teaching tax flow community that we should always work with our board of directors. And one of the people on your board of directors, other than your tax professional, would be uh, someone that you go to for financial advice, a licensed financial advisor that you trust to accomplish your goals. But what we want the listeners to 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 hear now, and, and if you're an entrepreneur or even thinking about becoming an entrepreneur, Get a good idea of what plans are out there. We're going to start with the simplest of plans and go all the way to the more complex common retirement plans. Understand that there are even more complex plans than this, potentially. And then we're going to talk through different types of deadlines and contributions. And I'm going to give you, give you some tips and tricks to determine and navigate what plan is best for you. And Chris, is too, you know, you mentioned it pretty much right out of the gate here, right? Is you know, there is no set it and forget it, or as I somehow pulled it out of thin air one day and referred to it as an easy bake oven, right? It, it just doesn't exist for this. And for those of you that may be listening and saying, oh, well, you know what? I work for myself. I'm too busy to, you know, bother myself with this, or I just got too much stuff going on. Trust me, you're not the only one. I've fallen to this myself earlier on. But the good news is there's tons of options. So even though there's more options, obviously there's more responsibility, but also too, it's, you know, it's one of those things, Chris, and I think you would agree with this too, right? That most people that go into business for themselves, I think we all knew or know earlier on, you're like, I am going to have to dedicate everything I have towards this little egg that we want to eventually hatch and grow where, you know, unfortunately this sometimes becomes a situation where planning this far down the road 
becomes an afterthought, which is not a good thing. So Chris, I'm sure you, you see that more than anybody else here when we talk about that, but is that sometimes a, sometimes a situation for lack of better terms? Absolutely. Because we get in, it's very easy for people to slip into habits. They could be financial. They could be a bunch of things. They could be good, bad, or indifferent. Um, could have a bad pickleball habit, which I don't think is a bad thing. But, you know, I've, I've just gotten like some of my healthier habits is that I've, I've gotten to the point where I love to exercise first thing in the morning. We're talking about six in the morning to seven 30. Uh, and it's just a habit I get into. And, and so when I, which is usually pretty good, but let's say I have something going on with the kids or just, with, you know, sometimes when we're, usually when we're traveling, John, I, I always carve out time to get, get the heart rate up. But uh, if something comes up at that time and I go, I, it's funny, just the other, this last week, I, I went for a run at like, I don't know, 5 p.m. And I was just like, man, this doesn't, I'm struggling here. This is weird because it's, it's not my habit to go at that time of the day. So as entrepreneurs, you're right, John, when we first start, we usually, we usually fall into this, I've got a survival mode and you're not into forming habits with uh, financial habits because you're, you're usually taking almost all of your revenue and dumping it right back into your operations uh, to, to grow or to survive. So that's, you know, that's one of the things to consider, but we're going to, we're going to break that. You, you're going to learn in this podcast that being an entrepreneur actually gives you a little more flexibility than an employee when it comes to retirement plan contributions. And, um, and let's dive in and start with your, your most basic type of retirement account. We've talked about this in the future and within the teaching tax flow system, we define different tax strategies and different concepts is basic, advanced, or ultra advanced. Basics typically is going to be a tax strategy or concept that you can do on your own. You could do, you could be in your pajamas on the computer and execute that strategy. Advanced typically means you're going to want to work with a tax professional or financial advisor to make sure that that happens. Um, but it's still a implementation wise, it's usually a one person or one outfit implementation team. And then ultra advanced is where we're bringing in multiple resources from, from multiple entities or organizations to make sure that the, that the strategy is, is uh, executed properly. But let's start with basic. Basic is going to be your traditional or Roth IRA, individual retirement account, uh, account uh, type of plan rather. And I, I'm going to do my best to not use acronyms, at least in the beginning. So IRA stands for individual retirement account. This is a basic type of plan and it's for individuals. We get questions all the time like, hey, I own a business, a single member LLC, or I own a, uh, I, the business is going to make my contribution to the IRA for me. Okay, well, this is an individual plan, hence IRA. Uh, there are limits. Uh, those limits are indexed for inflation, but about $7,000 Per person, there's some provisions where you can put an extra thousand dollars a year in um, if you're over the age of 50. Um, there is no employer match, so it's, it's you're just an individual. You have to have earned income, and there are some thresholds as far as income that could phase you out of a contribution. Timing is important as well. We talk about some strategies are a B, uh, and and some are uh, not a B. Now, in some ways, a B could be a bad word, John, but not here. A B means, you know, or uh, I'm sorry, a P. Oh my gosh. Sorry. Some strategies are, so a B means a basic strategy. A P means post year end. So some strategies could be done, executed after the end of the year. Some have to be done by December 31st. So this is a P strategy, meaning you have until April 15th of any year to make a contribution for the previous year. So traditional or Roth IRA, the real, this, this is our most basic type of retirement account. It's a great starter account. It's not an account that's designed specifically for entrepreneurs, yet it's utilized by many entrepreneurs when they get started. You know, we talked about different options here. It's nice that there's not just one, two, or even three things that somebody can choose, right? There's various options for, uh, call it complexity, right? Like you had mentioned basic, advanced, ultra advanced, but then also too, right? Like different it's almost like, um, you know, not specifically investments, right? But one shoe does not fit all in the case here. So I know you're going to dive into some other ones here too, but let's almost, as we move along here too, maybe we use a, use a couple examples, right? So maybe we look at this, say you're a 
solopreneur freelancer making 75,000 a year all the way up to say a consultant making two to 300,000 dollars a year. So obviously there's different scenarios, different individuals, but I know you have some great information here, which will, will cover some of these in more detail. Absolutely. And a, a lot of times people in the community and, and even clients in the private CBA practice come to us and say, well, what, what should I, what retirement plan should I utilize? The answer lies within the, in the question that I ask them next. How much, how much do you want to commit per year to your plan? How much are you committing per year financially um, to the retirement plan? That tells, so if, if you're someone that's getting started and you're looking to invest $5,000 per year, then a traditional IRA, assuming you meet the other requirements, would be an, a great starting spot. Because the more complex the type of retirement plan, the more administrative cost is associated with it. So as we walk in, let's, let's talk about a, the, the second type of plan that is an IRA, so individual retirement account, retirement account that's specifically designed for people that are self-employed uh, or entrepreneurs. That's a SEP IRA, S-E-P, that stands for Simplified Employee Pension Plan. So if you're that retirement account or if you're that self-employed individual and you want to put money into a retirement account, and let's say you want to put in more than you can into a traditional IRA, or let's say you're phased out of putting money into a traditional IRA, maybe your spouse is a high income earner. If they are, congratulations on winning one of the one of the marriage Olympics. Um, <laughs> but let's say that's that's the case. You can put in the lesser of 25% of your net earnings or depending on your age in the $60,000 range. So John, in your example of the person that, let's say their net income's $80,000, they're self-employed and they don't have any other employees. Let's say their spouse is a high income earner and they couldn't do a traditional IRA. In that case, they could put up to $15,000 into that SEP IRA and get that tax deduction in the year of the contribution. The nice thing about the SEP that is much, that is similar to a traditional Roth, but gives even more flexibility is the SEP contribution is not due until the tax deadline of your tax return. Now, John, you know, I put a lot of content out there talking about how I love tax extensions and how they allow you extra time uh, to implement tax strategies. So for this case, if you extend your tax return, you have actually till October 15th on a personal return to make your SEP contribution for the previous year and still get a deduction on the previous year. So this is an advanced uh, retirement plan for entrepreneurs. It's for employers only. So if I have an, a couple employees, then most likely they would it, it, over time become eligible where I would have to contribute to a SEP for them. Um, I have a lot of flexibility on the deadline and I can contribute in general, 25% of my net income, unless that exceeds, you know, over, let's say in the $60,000 range. If that's the case, then you usually would want to move into a different plan. So, but the SEP IRA is a, is a great weapon um, in, in, especially for people that don't have employees that are just getting, getting the ball rolling. Right. Right. And Chris, you mentioned that too, you know, obviously there's certain limitations within certain of these as well too. So kind of, you know, reiterating what you mentioned on, you know, a little bit earlier on too, it's, you know, within your personal board of directors, having your financial person, your tax person that you go to, it's, it's really Corey, Corey O'Graffing the dance. Well, I couldn't say that word today. Um, I'm as bad with saying words as, as you are letters, man. It's like you give a tax guy an acronym and he's fine. You give him one letter and he drops the ball. It's like, you know, you give a marketing guy a hard word that doesn't have spell check. And apparently I can't even say it. Um, but even, well, that's all right. We've got a spell check, John. We, we, we're going to be fine. We got chat GPT and spell check. I think, we'll, yeah, we'll be all right. Um, so, Chris, you, you mentioned a couple of things, too, in there. You know, and I know we threw out some of the examples or the scenarios of certain types of individuals. Um, before we get too far along in these, you know, maybe what's an example besides doing nothing, right? Um, say somebody from day one, they say, yes, you know, this is what I want to contribute to. This is This is what I'm looking for. Do they really, again, being that entrepreneurs are very busy people, especially at the beginning there, do you see it or is it a bad idea sometimes just to set up anything and just jump into it, contribute, and then change it to something else down the road? Or would your suggestion really be 
you know, maybe pump the brakes for six months or a year, then look at your situation and plan accordingly. And case in point, right? Uh, a freelancer, you might have a freelance graphic designer, we'll say for example, their ambitions are extremely high, but they have no idea how much income they're going to bring in. So by them making a decision on what type of account they want to start from the beginning, is that a good idea or a bad idea? Well, I would say for a freelancer with no employees, the best thing to do is don't do anything in the very beginning. Because remember, with the traditional IRA or Roth IRA or the SEP IRA, you have until the next year to determine if you're eligible to make a contribution and what that maximum contribution is. So although, so what, maybe what you might want to do is set up a separate checking account, you call it your tax account, call it your retirement account, but just set that money aside, not into a retirement, because what the problem is, is if people put, contribute to a retirement account, I just had a private CPA firm client today, I wanted to give him a pop knot because he he went and contributed to an I, Roth IRA um, and and once we found out, he had to take it out, right? So there's really no reason to rush those contributions in those two cases. So I would say, you know, wait it out. Let's see where, where you stand and let's make sure it makes sense tax-wise because especially if you're, you're a freelancer just getting started, your taxable income might not be very high. So you might be a gold diagnosis or green diagnosis, meaning a Roth would make more sense than the traditional IRA. So that that's my advice for someone just getting started. Now, Let's climb up the complexity ladder a little bit. We're talking about two more advanced retirement account types for entrepreneurs. One of them is something we use within our private CPA practice. So we have, I think, about eight to 10 participants in this plan. Um, it's called the Simple IRA. And when a Simple IRA was created uh, by Congress because they wanted smaller employees, employers, to be able to offer a retirement plan for their employees that's very inexpensive, that the compliance fees are low compared to maybe forming a, a 401k plan. That's where the simple IRA was born. So the simple IRA is an advanced uh, retirement plan. Again, we use it for, in our private practice. It does involve, the contributors are employees and employers. So employees for the 2023 20, um, tax year can contribute and this goes through a W-2. This is very important. Employees contribute through W-2 up to $15,500, plus there's some catch-up contributions if you're over the age of 50. The employer gets the choice of matching either 2% 2 of, of their wages or up to a 3% match based on what the employee does. So some employers say, look, I'm going to contribute to a simple IRA for all my employees a flat 2%. If you put money in or not, some employers say, no, we're going to match up to 3%, but we but you've got to put 3% in and then we'll match your 3%. And that's what we do. We want our team members to at least put 3% away into their in, into that simple IRA. So simple IRA is great, in my opinion, for employers that have, let's say, 20 employees or less and that want to, that, that want to be able to, con to, to allow their employees to put in more money through their W-2 than they could in a traditional IRA, and they want to match some and contribute some to the employee's retirement plan. Gotcha. Gotcha. And that's a good, good explanation of them too. And I know there's a couple other ones that really get into the into the complexity, the weeds. I, I like how the way you described that. It was a complexity ladder. It was a good way. It is a complexity ladder, and let's keep climbing into the third advanced common common uh, retirement plan for entrepreneurs is the solo K or solo Roth K. The cool thing with the solo K is, is that it's for someone that is, uh, that is self-employed and has no employees with the exception of themselves or their spouse. So it could be as someone that owns a C corporation, um, that they're the, an employee and their spouse is an employee. It could be someone that's an S corp. It could be someone that's just self-employed and employs their spouse. So this allows someone, we talk about income shifting to family members. This allows someone to create a 401k plan and make it what's called a solo K plan, which means your 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 um, your complexity is less than a safe harbor 401k plan, which I'll talk about in a moment. You don't have to worry about unfairly treating lower, lower compensated employees because you're the only employee, you and your spouse. It also allows you to put significantly more money into the 401k than, than even a simple IRA. So for 2023, it's $22,500 each employee could put in 
and there's a bonus if they're over the age of 50. And then the employer, which is you, can kick in another up to, let's say, in the $40,000 range each. So my point is, is if I if you run into a, a taxpayer that, um, that has a significant amount of net income that says, I want to put up to $100,000 into a retirement plan. It's myself and my spouse. We run this business together. We don't have any other employees. The solo K or solo Roth 401k really, really could be a great weapon for them. One other thing with the solo K, and we're not advocating doing this without consulting your tax professional and financial advisor, but you can take a loan against your for solo 401k for up to $50,000 or half of the vested value tax-free. So it does allow the owner, this, that, that self-employed person, to have some flexibility with, and be able to take money out as a loan instead of a taxable distribution plus 10% penalty. So solo 401k or solo Roth, great for a someone self-employed or is their only employee or is them and their spouse are the only employee that's looking to put away, let's say $40,000 or more into retirement. So really we've covered what, what I think we had about four of them that we've gone through so far on these. And obviously there's the the much more advanced ones. So we won't call it the dark side, but these are definitely not for your uh, for your DIY attempters for the most part, right? Absolutely. We've got two ultra advanced common retirement plan types for entrepreneurs. Reminder on the simple IRA and solo K, those are going to go through your W-2 wages. Um, the solo K, unless you're self-employed and or, and, and you don't have W-2 wages. If you're just a Schedule C person, then it wouldn't go. your contributions wouldn't go through that, a W-2. But let's talk about Safe Harbor 401k. Why is it ultra advanced? Well, because with a Safe Harbor 401k, there, there are more rules, more testing. And, and this is going to be for someone that wants to have a 401k plan, wants to create those opportunities to put uh, between employee and employer, you know, $40,000 plus away per year, but also has employees. And the 401k um, rules make sure that employees are treated fairly, uh, even if you have uh, several that are that are lower in compensation, or you have a small group of people that are that are high in compensation. So that's why it's a safe harbor. Um, you're going to hire a third-party administrator, what we call in the business a TPA, and they're going to help you make sure that your 401k plan is compliant, hence the safe harbor in that it's not favoring just the higher uh, higher income earners. The limits as far as contributions from an employee and employer are the same as a solo K. So basically this is gonna be a solo K for people that have uh, employees. And this is gonna be a great fit for people. You know, we talked about, hey, if someone has 20 or less employees, that simple IRA is good. If you have more than 20 employees, or if you, ha if you wanna contribute significantly more money than just a 3% match, which is still generous from the simple IRA, a safe harbor 401k plan would be a great option. The challenge is, is that your, your administrative costs are going to be significantly higher with a safe harbor 401k plan. And we're talking, you know, upwards of five to $10,000 a year potentially versus the simple IRA. Awesome. Awesome. And then we'll save the best for last or the most complex for last, right? And I, and I knew this one was coming. Um, and some and this one, if I remember right too, this one is specifically for employers. So this is something that even if you're an employee, this may be something that your um, your fearless leader is putting in place or has put in place for you as an employee if you haven't gone to the entrepreneur side of things yet. Correct. So the most complex, ultra-advanced, retirement plan for employer and entrepreneurs is a defined benefit plan. Now a defi or DB plan, someone call some people call it, but a defined benefit plan can work in concert with a 401k plan or a SEP or a simple IRA. But what a defined benefit plan does is it allows you to contribute significantly more money into your retirement account. And the average employer contribution, which if you're self-employed, you'd be the employer, is about $250,000 per year. Now, the amount you can contribute to the defined benefit plan depends on your, uh, as we like to say, situationally dependent. Um, <clears throat> and it would, there are some significant administrative costs 
because you do need a third party administrator. You need to hire an actuary a professional each year and calculate what your maximum contribution is going to be. But let's put it like this. If you're in the situation where you have at least $100,000 or more to contribute to retirement, I would almost say 150 or more, then the defined benefit plan might be a good option for you. If not, I would stick to the 401k plans for now. If you are in that situation, congratulations and really look at that defined benefit plan. There are some restrictions, there are some pluses and minuses. But again, you know, if you're contributing $150,000, $200,000 per year into this plan and, and uh, you know, reducing your current year tax by sixty dollars to $80,000, that is well worth the, the administrative costs and effort to, um, to implement this defined benefit plan. Ultra advanced, so we're going to bring in that team of people. We're going to expand your board of directors to make sure we get the right people and the right seats to help you out. Chris, I have so many notes on these. I knew we had some of these, but now I'm going back through my notes, trying to even figure out what I was writing down there. Cause some of these are, you know, a little bit more confusing, obviously complex than other ones. Um, so again, kind of, you know, it's fun doing these podcasts because I kind of consider myself more of the more of the average Joe. And heck, I even learned a couple things here. It's always entertaining. Well, my advice to put a bow on this, and uh, you're no average Joe or John, my friend. You're, you, but my my advice is this: work backwards, come up with a plan. Where do you think you want to be at when retirement? Work with a licensed financial advisor. Make sure that you determine what kind type of cash flow you have available. Um, you, know, you don't want to be taking money out of your living, your house payment, or your utility payment to put into retirement. You know, you've got this has got to be money you're gonna, you're willing to set aside and um, let grow. And from there, you could, and then we have to look at, do you have employees? What type of structure you are? And then we figure out what plan works best. That's a great stopping point for us on this topic today. And as I always, always like to close it out with, we'll see everybody back here, same time, different day, different topic here on the Teaching Tax Flow podcast. The content provided is for educational purposes only. We encourage you to seek personalized investment advice from your financial professional. For all tax and legal advice, please consult your CPA or attorney. Investment advisory services are offered through Cabin Advisors, a registered investment advisor. Securities are offered through Cabin Securities, a registered broker dealer. The content of this podcast does not constitute an offer of securities. Offerings can only be made through an offering memorandum, and you should carefully examine the risk factors and other information contained in the memorandum.